वेलकम टू द फ्रास फोकस रीजनल एनेस्थीशिया सीरीज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द सेगमेंटल स्पाइल इन एनेस्थीशिया वी नो दैट आल इट इज ए वेरी इमर्जिंग कॉन्सेप्ट एंड लोट ऑफ रिसर्च आर गोइंग ऑन दिस टॉपिक इज इट सेफ और नॉट सेफ टूडेज टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज सेगमेंटल स्पाइनल एनेस्थीशिया आई एम डॉक्टर गोपाल कृष्ण जालवाल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एनेस्थीशिया सो वी नो दैट स्पाइनल सेगमेंटल स्पाइनल एनेस्थीशिया आल्सो सिनोनिम्स विद द थोरेसिक सेगमेंटल स्पाइनल एनेस्थीशिया आल दो इट इज एन एन अमर्जिंग कॉन्सेप्ट बट इट इज ए नॉट ए न्यू आइडिया और नॉट ए न्यू टेक्निक फर्स्ट आर्टिकल was published uh, with the name of general spinal anesthesia instead of segmental spinal anesthesia by the professor thomas jonesco in 1909 thomas jonesco proposed the use of thoracic spinal anesthesia for neck and thoracic surgeries he performed puncture between t and t2 and he mentioned that i have a total of 1015 thoracic spinal anesthesia without any depth and without any serious complications so a, another uh, case report was published in 2006 in a bj with title of segmental spinal anesthesia for cholecystectomy in a patient with a severe lung disease and the patient was waiting for the lung transplant so uh, general anesthesia was avoided when judet performed segmental spinal anesthesia at T10 level through CSC, the patient was hemodynamically stable except initial drop of BP till 86 by 67 mm Hg, and no sedative analgesic given intraoperatively. An initial hypotension uh, was responded to the ephedrine very well. What is the technique? How to perform the segmental spinal anesthesia? Technique was explained by the Van Judewet in that case report. First, aseptic precautions should be used in all uh, segmental spinal anesthesia procedures, and position it can be either lateral or sitting, and we should. to uh, insert the spinal needle through the csc technique first we have to insert the 16 goes to a needle at t10 level through the midline approach and identify the epidural space by loss of resistance technique then 27 gaze pencil point spinal needle is advanced through the twin needle till puncture the dura once the free flow of csf is confirmed then local anesthetic 1 ml isoburic vipivacaine 0.5% and 25 mg fentanyl is injected intrathecally an effective block extend includes t4 to l2 dermatomes that was evaluated by the pin pricks what makes segmental spinal anesthesia accepted the anatomical explanations in mri imaging of the spinal column at the thoracic region it was seen that spinal cord lies entirely in the thoracic region and there is a enough space between the dura mater and spinal cord that increase the margin of safety and another study which was conducted with the title of low incidence of neurological complication during the thoracic epidurals anatomical explanation in the same study it was mentioned it was in the same study it was also mentioned the spinal cord lies entirely in the thoracic region that's why there are low incidence of neurological complication during the thoracic epidural and another study in which anatomy of thoracic spinal clan in different positions was mentioned through the mri imaging of spinal region and they observed the they observed the uh, space between the uh, in the dura mater and the cord in the different position in the supine it at the level of t6 it was 3.75 mm in the lateral position it was 4.5 mm and sitting position it was 
5.951 what are the advantages no blockage of lower extremities so no venodilation in larger portion of body and so less adverse effect in hemodynamics dose of local anesthetic is very low so it because it blocks only uh, section of spinal cord degree of muscle relaxation achievable without central peripheral circulatory depressions and patient has motor control over lower limbs which means patient exhibit high level of satisfaction which decrease the anxiety what are the indications patient selection is very important if you are going for the segmental spinal anesthesia because it is specially utilized for the high risk patients those have a greater risk for the general anesthesia another indications are laparoscopic cholecystectomy breast cancer surgery such as mrm and abdominal surgery umbilical hernia <coughs> etc so in 2007 a study was published on the laparoscopic cholecystectomy under the segmental thoracic spinal anesthesia by van judet and these are the patient demographic details in this you can see that it has been highlighted that paresthesia during injection was uh, not noted in any patients out of 20 patients and patient satisfactory score was 10 in 12 patients that is a significant number and uh, what was the anesthesia anesthetic outcome and you can see there was uh, no, nausea and vomiting was nil it was not noted in any patients and uh, respiratory depressions was also not noted in the in this study and in the two patient there was uh, hypotension after the segmental spinal anesthesia that was responded well with the 5 mg or 10 mg ephedrine now come to the another study in which they compare the isobaric and hyperbaric pupivacan for the orthopedic surgery these are the demographic detail and characteristic of the nurexial anesthesia techniques and you can see that duration of motor blockage was more in the isobaric and duration of sensory blockage was more in the hyperbaric and about the complications bradycardia and hypotension was noted in both patients and but they were uh, not statically significant all patient developed spinal and there was no failure the solution did not affect the onset of blockage duration of motor blockage was greater than the sensitive with isobaric the duration of sensory block was greater than the motor block with the hyperbaric so these were the another studies about the segmental spinal anesthesia as advantage over the general anesthesia for first cancer surgery and thoracic spinal anesthesia is safe for the patient undergoing abdominal cancer surgery so what are the future concerns literature has provided preliminary evidence that segmental spinal anesthesia can be an effective technique for the routine laparoscopic surgery still further studies needed to explore the safety and efficacy of segmental spinal anesthesia because there are few complications when you are going to perform the segmental spinal anesthesia maybe you can touch the spinal cord uh, through the spinal needle and it can cause the spinal cord injury so these this technique is reserved only for the high risk surgery those are unf- those patients are unfit for the greater uh, general anesthesia so thank you